right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Jay Kelfer, who is actually just up the coast in Santa Monica in Los Angeles. How are you doing, Jay? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on today. <laughs> yeah, and what we're going to talk about today is building authentic connections that help people create raving customers, unlimited freedom, and epic life experiences. And, and Jake, just a little bit of background on you. So you worked with the LA Lakers uh, when Kobe was still there, you know, God rest his soul, and uh, you were having a fantastic time living, what, for a, for if you're a basketball fan, obviously, living the dream. But then you decided to go off and start your own business, and then you learned from from leaders and, and, and amazing people throughout the world. And now you go around and you help people to create amazing experiences themselves. So just take it back for a moment, right? When you decided to give up the dream job and go out on your own, um, that's obviously a scary proposition. You know, what was it that helped you get over the line? For anybody listening who maybe now, especially because of the pandemic or whatever, is thinking about maybe making a life change, what actually helped you take that step over the line as opposed to stay? So I think, I think it was twofold, okay? And I, and I think, you know, working for the Lakers, I was an assistant, you know, bottom of the mm -hmm. totem pole, doing sure. whatever I had to do. And that's part of the game, right? You got to put in your dues, pay your time. And one of the things on that side was, I just realized working that job that I didn't want to work for somebody else for the rest of my life. I didn't want to continue to do things that were less than my true potential. And I wanted to make a bigger difference. And I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do that in the role that I was currently in. It's not to say that the job wasn't great. The people weren't pretty great, but overall, the only way that I was going to be able to achieve what I believed was success and what I believed was greatness was if I were to do it in my own way of creating a company, building incredible relationships and going out and experience life uh, on my own. Because yeah. I feel a lot of times, I mean, people feel kind of stuck or trapped or I think the more to the point is doing what they think is expected of them as opposed to, to doing what they want to do. And I just think it's an interesting time now as people have gone through some probably, uh, probably the greatest collective, uh, collective experience that any of us will ever go through. But I think a lot of self-reflection and I think maybe there's a time for people who want to take a chance and do something maybe that they want to do as opposed to do what's expected of them. Like what oh, you for sure. For sure. I mean, right now there's no better time to go out and do something on your own or to try something or to make a change. And here's one of the big reasons why is because people are more accessible than ever before, which mm -hmm. means it's easier to get information. It's easier to get in touch with game changers. It's easier to, to put yourself out there and get the right feedback. We're able to speed up that process because of unfortunately what's been going on that's enabled us to be closer to our technology rather than traveling and, and doing all these in-person things. So the speed at which we're able to do things is fast, it's faster and much more efficient. And I think the other thing kind of coming back to our subject about uh, building authentic connections uh, with, with customers and, and, and the like, is I think that ironically, because we've been locked down and because we've had to leverage technology, I think people are discovering that you can actually build very good relationships with people virtually you can actually express yourself and let your authenticity come through even even across technology and that uh, and that in fact there's a huge appetite for authenticity today probably more than there has been enough for a long time oh and, and and look when you think about it too is the people want to see who you are as we have more and more competition in everything, especially in the online space with businesses going online, more online businesses, the self-education world becoming even greater, we're seeing with more and more people is that people want you. They don't want the person you think they want you to be. They want you. And the right people gravitate towards that personality, right? And I think that that's something that's so powerful when we're making a switch or when we're trying to build out a new network is you don't have to be what you think the other person wants. You just have to be you and own who you are because you attract the right people and you enjoy yourself in the process more, which is the name of the game. So uh, let me just dig in on that for a moment when you say own who you are, because I think this is a cre an incredibly important point for, for people to understand is, so obviously to begin with, you need to be a little bit self-aware and really understand who you are. 
And if there's a couple of rough edges you need to, you know, smooth out, maybe so. But then talk to me a little bit about owning who you are and what, what that can do for somebody. Well, when you own who you are, you can start to take the actions that you really want to be taking too, right? And so owning who you are from a connection standpoint, and we'll focus on this a lot, mm -hmm. is, being, is being proud of your personality, is understanding that you don't have to have a certain style to connect. You just have to have your style to connect. If you don't like to be on video, but you like to write, maybe instead of being on video, you're writing a blog posts, you're doing mini articles, you're doing graphics, right? And you're writing out quotes. If you prefer just being on a camera, then maybe you need to be doing your own mini TV show, your own Instagram show, your own distribution, right? And so the thing that we have to understand is you don't have to be an extroverted, super high energy person. You don't have to be an introverted, more reserved person. You can be the best of who you are and use that to your advantage to meet people where they're at. And I think that's a, and, I, and, I, and again, I love that. I think that's an incredibly important point because in some ways, if you think about the traditional workspace and the, and the traditional way of doing business, it definitely skewed towards a, a certain type of person in many ways. And this has been in many ways also a great equalizer because it has given people the opportunity to excel leveraging, as you said, their own, their own skill sets, their own personality traits, and still be just as successful as anybody else, if not more so. And, you know, I, I think about it in a really interesting, interesting way, because obviously I'm pretty high energy and I'm mm -hmm. pretty extroverted. And I work with a lot of people that have exact opposite personalities. And what we've found through it is that there are certain scripts, there are certain things that generate the same response. But here's what our job is when we're building connection. It's how do we make that other person feel based off the words we say, the body language we carry, and the actions that we take. And if we can make somebody feel a certain way and elicit a certain emotional response, then it doesn't matter how we're doing it. What matters is that we're giving them that feeling. And oftentimes that's a positive feeling, right? By asking more intimate questions, by listening and reaffirming what someone's saying, by actually making a commonality point of contact in your outreach rather than just a copy and paste point of outreach. All of those things help people feel that you actually care. And then you're able to bring them in that way because it's about them. Connection is never about us. Sure, mm -hmm. we need to own our style and own who we are and figure out the best way for us. But more importantly is we have to know what works for them. And then we have to go to where they're at and bring us together. And that's where the secret sauce lies. Yeah, and, and again, I just want to underline something that you said there about listening, because I do think we live in this world today where everybody is so distracted and being present. Is, a lot of people struggle with being present. You know, you're having a car. I mean, you can see it. You're having a conversation with somebody. You hear their phone buzz in their pocket and immediately you see this blank look on their face and you know they're not listening to you anymore. They're thinking, my God, what was that? What was that? Is that more important? Um, I think listening skills, there's nothing more uh, credibility building, but also res communicates respect more than listening. And as you say, validating what somebody said, that's a massive way of building trust and, and authenticity. My mom always said growing up, she's a clinical social worker. And uh, one of the things she always talks about is this idea of validation. You see, because most mm -hmm. of us listen with the intent to respond. Most of us listen, focusing on what is, what are we going to say that that comes next, right? Because we're putting ourselves as the more important part of the relationship. But instead, what we need to do is listen with the intent to understand and validate. And when we listen with that intention, it doesn't mean that we need to agree with somebody because a lot of times we're not going to agree. And sometimes that's how you build a connection even quicker. Yes, yeah. But you have to validate, understand, and respond based off the validation. And so that's something that's so powerful because then we can start to break down this connection. We can leverage our body language, right? We can leverage the validation and understanding to then re, um, to reestablish what comes next to make it about them, not just about us, and we can guide it down the path. Yeah, and, and as your mom would know that there's a, there's a technique in, in couples therapy that uh, is often used whereby you know, one person says something and then the other person has to repeat it back to them but they don't get to move on until the person who said it in the first place agrees that that is exactly what they said. And it could take five, it could take 10 goes to get there. But, but the, again, it's to your point, it's that, it's that thing about 
we think we're great listeners, but oftentimes we're really not um, tuned in properly. And I think whenever you show somebody that you are listening properly and you do validate what they're saying, as you, as you rightly pointed out, it could even be contentious, but you know something, they'll go, well, at least he heard me. Yeah, and, and to your point, and that's a funny exercise that you kind of bring up, yeah. but to your point is when we talk, oftentimes, one, people don't understand what exactly we're saying, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not that we are, they're not trying to, or on the flip side, we're not trying to actively listen, but it's our job as a connector to make it as easy for somebody as possible to understand what it is that we're saying, <laughs> to understand what it is that we're selling. A confused person doesn't buy from us. But the more simplistic we can make it, the easier it is for that person to see where we're coming from and to be able to potentially hopefully buy from us or to take that next action step in the relationship, whatever type of relationship mm -hmm. that may be. So I, I think it's great, funny that you brought that, that, that exercise up from couples therapy. Yeah, no, it's funny too, because if you think about it, um, when we are customers, and we customer service, how often, how frustrated have we all become when we call up customer service or we have an issue or we have a question and we're like, you don't understand what I'm trying to ask. And they're, and they're trying to solve a different problem. They're answering a different question and you're just saying, you're not listening to me. And I think that's an experience that we should always remember when we're on the other side. I love that example. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so when you're, when you're working with, with the companies that you work with, what are some of the ways that you can help them to connect more with their prospects and customers so that they can come across in this in this more authentic way? And obviously, you have to be authentic to begin with. I'm not talking about faux authenticity. I'm talking about sure. real authenticity. But how, how do you help them to be able to create a, an environment where people feel like I'm interacting with somebody of somebody that's authentic, somebody who I can trust, somebody who really cares about my business? So one of the things that, that we love to recommend to companies, to businesses, to entrepreneurs is I call it the rule of three. And the mm -hmm. rule of three is, and, and this you can scale up or down as much as you want, but at its core, the rule of three states that you're going to connect with one prospect, one current or existing customer, and then one, what we call one, two steppers, people that are potential partners, collaborators, mentors, coaches, et cetera, that can advance your knowledge and skill set currently. And so depending on your customer base, how long you've been in business, you can scale this up or down daily. But what this does is it allows you to get constant touch with prospects, right? And then mm -hmm. you can use certain different scripts to touch them at different points of the customer journey. But then you have your current customers, letting them know exactly that you care about them, asking for their feedback, asking for testimonials, asking if there's anything that we can do better, right? We're constantly re-engaging with them because those people also, the, 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 the best prospect is the one that you already have, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we love that and the repeat buying. And so it's always important to take care of them, which is why I don't say value prospecting or, or certain yeah. customers more than others. It's, it's got to go after. And then the third is the one, two steppers. So let's say you're a company that has a, a ton of current customers and you're trying to prospect. Maybe you'll scale one, one of those three things up higher than the other, but that's a, that's a really simple strategy to help understand how, how many targeted outreaches we're going to do to which demographic of people. So that's, that's one thing that we always like to recommend. Um, and then another thing that is really, really powerful that we've seen is habit stacking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we know that networking and connection is super important, but what we sometimes do is we say, Oh, networking, I know it's important, but that's at the bottom of the to-do list today. And yep. it gets pushed down and down and down because it's never an urgent thing depending on how we view it, right? It's mm -hmm. only urgent if someone's reaching out to us. It's only urgent if we have a problem. And so what we do is we, we, we do it habit stacking, um, which is where you take your a current habit that you already do. So every morning at 9 a.m. you have a sales meeting. Every morning at 9.45 you're opening your emails. Whatever it may be that you already are doing, you stack on a 20 minute, a 15 minute block of time to purely connect. And why mm -hmm. that becomes uh, consistent is because we're intentionally doing it with something that we're already habitually routined and inclined to do. So it makes it easier to do that. And then you say, you know, after I check my emails in the morning, I will do the rule of three. And then it gets you going and you can start to process it, making it easier to build these connections. I think that's fantastic advice. Um, and as you said, I mean, it's all about building good habits and and then making the most of of the time that you have uh, because you're correct i mean the thing is 
sometimes the things that we push to the bottom of the pile are the most impactful things. And we, we push them to the bottom of the pile because you know, we don't want to do them or whatever. But sometimes when we embrace them, it turns out that, hey, we actually enjoy them. We're pretty good at them and they have a big impact. Absolutely. Yeah, so sometimes you have to actually, you know, just, uh, you know, sometimes you're just avoiding and procrastinating on things. So I like the idea. I like the habit stacking. I like the, the framework of that. So it gives it makes it very, very easy for people. What are what is a couple of other things that you would uh, that you advise your clients to do? So again, I mean, it depends sometimes on, on what you're trying to do, right? If we're trying to scale, if we're trying to get mm -hmm. started, right? Depending sure. on where you're at in the business, but let's just take general connecting. Okay. Let's take general. You want to get to know somebody. I think what's really important is we always recommend, especially when we're using social media to find a, a commonality. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's getting the same spam messages and those have increased because of how easy it is yeah. to send messages. So what we try to do is we always try to customize it while also keeping it, while keeping a system. Meaning every time we reach out to someone, you got to have the name correct and you got to find a commonality. You got to find something that makes it obvious that you are not just copy and pasting. Even mm -hmm. if the rest of the script is copy, copy and pasting, right. can you find one thing? Did they go to the same school? Did they go to a rival school? Did they, did they wear the same type of clothes as you? Did they have the same family members? Have they traveled to the same places? What can you find really quickly that separates you immediately? And that just adds a whole nother element because it's refreshing and it's different and different is better mm -hmm. because then you start to connect at an emotional level rather than a direct business level. And that's, that's really powerful. Yeah, no, I love that because I mean, people do, I mean, you know, as human beings, we're hardwired to look at, to look for things that we have in common when we're trying to connect, we're always searching for that. So if you present that right out of the gate, obviously you're making it a lot easier for people to, to want to connect with you. Absolutely. That's, that's for sure. Yeah, listen, um, thanks, Jake. This has been this has been fantastic. Uh, I know we could talk for a lot longer, but uh, there's some fantastic nuggets in there. Um, all of Jake's information will be in the contributor bio below this video. But before we go, please, Jake, tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, so my main focus right now is on on helping uh, ambitious entrepreneurs start and scale their business through connection. So we have you know coaching programs, group coaching programs. Uh, books, things like that. But um, that's, that's really what I'm focused on right now. And the best places to, to reach me on Instagram at Jake Kelfer or my website, jakekelfer.com. All right. Listen, thanks again, Jake. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.